इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी खरगपुर माई नेम इज़ अमित उखले आई एम करेंटली अ प्राइम मिनिस्टर रिसर्च फेलो इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग आई टी तिरुपति सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट लाइक ऑलवेज the slime and interactive session is to boost your performance it is not compulsory but it is highly encouraged uh, request you to be respectful in the chat in case of any question just uh, like unmute yourself and ask the question you can also ask the questions at the end of the session uh, likewise uh, like always the video will be uploaded on youtube in this youtube channel or you can uh, access the video through the uh, uh, google doc that has that is there in your uh, um, nptel login so coming to the session plan so we'll discuss the practice assignment session and then we'll move to your question and answers so coming to the course outline this is we are this is eight week course and we are in the second last week uh this is mainly like a informative week uh this uh, the number uh, the amount of concepts are covered uh, earlier itself and this week it is about more about application and the challenges how it is done and how you make a sensor ready for the market so that is what is the main aim of this session this week so the session is on device uh, the week uh, topic is device characterization and challenges so moving to the practice assignment uh, so this is uh, the first question what are the limit uh, limitations associated with making pcb based uh, variable electronics whether it, uh, so pcb based uh, variable electronics basically printed circuit boards are very, uh, highly uh, used in all your consumer electronics everything right from your mobile phones to uh, your anything basically anything and everything that is electronic in nature has a printed circuit board as a foundation on which the electronic circuitry is being made so that is what the thing is so basically it has tracks for your connectivity so rather than having wires in uh, like hundreds of wires the it has electronic conductive tracks and non conductive tracks which make it easier to uh, get uh, a lot of uh, sensor uh, components in one in a small uh, board per se so this reduces the overall cost uh, associated with electronics and it also helps in miniaturization of electronics so anyway that is something related to, related to electronics so i would not go in more in deep into it so the options are it is difficult to miniaturize it is uh, non customizable the stress um, modulus mismatch with the human skin none of the above so any guesses so i i have given you a hint if you have like uh, the printed circuit board is the revolutionization in the field so it has actually led to uh, the like miniaturization of electronics per se so like basically you can miniaturize the complex electronic devices into uh, on a single chip so uh, difficult to miniaturization is will not be an answer so again non customizable the devices the printed circuit board devices are highly customizable so basically it has uh, so it is made up of silicon wafer that will also help you in uh, arriving to the answer so i have already gotten the answers but i'll also give you a brief basic overview of it so basically printed circuit board are made up of electron uh, of silicon wafers so the first silicon wafer is um, oxidized you get sio2 that is the uh, non conductive layer so you have a completely non conductive layer then you etch out specific areas which you want it to be uh, conductive so you uh, do photolithography that is basically it's a completely big process so you do photolithography you get a uh, some areas uh, which you want to be uh, you make them you etch the silicon sio2 out at specific areas where you want it to be uh where uh, where you want the it to be conductive in nature so and then you do the sputter coating and uh, thus this is how the entire uh, system works so it is highly customizable it is very easy to miniaturize but as i said earlier it is made up of silicon wafer is the base material and silicon wafer and your human skin have a very big mismatch in, in your uh, 
स्टेस्टिन मॉडल सो बेसिकली सिलिकॉन इज अ ब्रिटल हाईली ब्रिटल मटीरियल बट इट हैज अ वेरी सो हाई स्टेस मॉडल अनलाइक द लाइक द स्टेस्टिन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ योर स्किन बेसिकली अवर स्किन इज हाईली इलास्टिक यू कैन पुल इट स्टिल इट डजेंट एक्चुअली फ्रैक्चर टू अ वेरी लार्ज एक्स अंटिल अ वेरी द फोर्स एक्स इज वेरी हाई वेर एज इन केस ऑफ सिलिकॉन इट इज हाईली ब्रिटेल सो इट कैन टेक अप अ लॉट ऑफ कॉम्प्रेसिव लोडिंग बट इट इज नॉट एबल टू टेक अप लाइक द टेंसाइल लोडिंग और शेयर लोडिंग सो दैट इज वाई द आंसर इज स्ट्रेस इन मॉडल इज मिसमैच विद द ह्यूमन स्किन सो एनी टाइम वेन एवर यू वॉन्ट टू डू वेरिएबल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स योर एम विल बी टू मैच द स्ट्रेस इन प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द स्किन पर से सो लाइक मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कैन बी द एसेंशियल कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ द वेरिएबल बायो सेंसर्स वेदर इट विल बी हाइड्रोजेल पावर सोर्स बायो सेंसर और पैसिव पम्प सो या अगेन सो दिस इज आई लाइक सेड अर्लियर यू कैन यू हैव टू रिलेट द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन टू दिस सो यू हैव टू गेट समथिंग विच इज हाई विच मैच इज द ह्यूमन स्किन एज क्लोज टू द इट मैच इज द प्रॉपर्टीज एज क्लोज टू द ह्यूमन स्किन सो देंसर शुड हैव प्रॉपर्टीज मेटीरियल मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज एज क्लोज टू द ह्यूमन स्किन सो यू हैव दैट आंसर ऑब्वियसली अ सेंसर कैन नॉट वर्क विदाउट अ पावर सोर्स the third thing is uh, you need the sample to come from the skin to the variable to the sensing zone per se so you need something to pump the sample to the sensing zone and again since it's a bio sensor it has it should have a bio recognition element so what do you think will be the answer uh, by the way it is a msq question it has multiple select so more than one can be right in this question हेलो सो वॉट इट्स इट्स एम एस क्यू क्वेश्चन वॉट डू यू थिंक विल बी दी राइट आंसर सो वी हैव टू मेक अ सेंसर विच इज क्लोज टू दी सो द मेन एम ऑफ ओके सो दिव्या यू आर पार्शली राइट दी करेक्ट आंसर इज बेसिकली ऑल ऑफ द अबव सो सी द थिंग इज पैसिव पम्प इज बेसिकली अ पम्प विच डज द विच गेट्स द बॉडी फ्लूड फ्रॉम द बॉडी सो बेसिकली वेरेबल सेंसर विल पर से इज डिटेक्टिंग योर सलाइवा और इट इज डिटेक्टिंग योर लाइक इंटस्टिशियल फ्लूड्स पर से सो इन दैट केस वॉट हैपन्स इज यू नीड द फ्लूड टू कम अप थ्रू अ कैपिलरी एक्शन इन टू द सेंसिंग जोन विदाउट अ कैपिलरी एक्शन द फ्लूड विल नॉट राइज अप राइट सो द मेन सो वॉट यू नीड इज अ लाइक अ पैसिव पम्प इज अ इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एलिमेंट विदाउट अ पैसिव पम्प द सैम्पल वोट एक्चुअली रीच द सेंसिंग जोन बिकॉज a variable bio sensor will have like some micro needles or something like that which will be as a in, at the interface and then you will have a sensor per se it will be in form of a watch or something like that so there will be a interface there will be the human skin there will be a interface which will be a uh, uh, micro needles or something like that and then there will be the sensor which will be in form of a watch or something or a patch so you need a capillary action to take the fluid from your body or from the interface from the skin to the sensing zone so passive pump is a very important element in a variable bio sensor it's a bio sensor so bio sensing will bio sensing is a bio recognition element will always always be there coming to the power source obviously you need the data transmission to occur or you need so a power source is basically a debatable thing so if you are having a 
per se a qualitative power uh, variable sensor which is uh, which is what you need you don't need a like a ph paper kind of uh, variable sensor uh, wherein you just see a change in color because that will be a one time use sensor and it will not allow continuous uh, sensing so uh, you the power source uh, component can be debated but uh, in um, normally in a logical scenario you need a power source because you need the data transmission to occur you need the electrochemical sensing to occur so a power source is also a essential component of a biosensor and uh, coming to hydrogel basically hydrogel uh, as i uh, maybe because of the uh, my voice was not audible because of some technical issue so coming to the previous question as i said the your aim when you are developing a variable biosensor is to have a uh, the sensor mechanical properties closely matching the human skin so if the um, sensor is too brittle or uh, something like like silicon or if it is too uh, like hard like a metal or something like that so what will happen is it will not uh, be uh, able to um, there will be a stress strain uh, gap between the the uh, bodies which will lead to uh, stress stra- uh, stress induction so what happens is when a body when there is a uh, huge stress mismatch uh, stress uh, mismatch so uh, mismatch between the elastic modulus uh, the high uh, the body with hi- higher uh, elastic modulus induces the induces residual stresses on the other on the weaker body or the or the body with a lower elastic modulus so basically that is why you need something which is uh, since you don't want the sensor to create a problem or uh, you don't want sensor to actually cause any problem in the uh, sensing so you have to get the uh, material properties of the variable sensor as close to the that of the human skin so that is why you need a hydrogen so am am i clear with this do you have any doubts you can unmute or you can put in the chat okay so now moving to the next question so yeah this is basically these are all uh, theoretical questions so give an example of nerve gas uh botter botter nilium toxin little boy sar- sarnin taboon so these are a very uh, like theoretical questions so uh, basically you can go through the lecture or maybe in many cases you might be knowing about it so i don't ha- i can i can't explain it to you but uh, just for information little boy is a nuclear bomb so other things basically all the other toxins little boy was the uh, uh, nuclear bomb i don't know which which one I, either it was hiroshima or nagasaki i don't remember which one it was but it was one of the two bombs that was dropped on uh, d- during the second world war so uh, but all the other toxins so water nilium toxin sarnin and taboon are uh, used as a nerve gas so basically when inhaled they de- uh, they damage the nervous system that is wh- what is the example of a nerve gas so this is this is very theoretical question so this is uh, what the answer is so i i don't think there will be any questions regarding this so moving to the fourth question which of the following are microbes pathogen uh, k uh, pneumonia escherichia coli sarnin vx so any guesses so this is a multiple choice question okay yeah you are right so the answer is a and b so any uh, micro or pathogen will have a two two uh, name so escherichia and coli or k or pneumonia so basically what happens is escherichia is the uh, main family uh, to which the microbe belongs and coli is the uh, that sub species or uh, uh, of that microbes so 
every uh, microbe will have a two name so that is a basic hint which you can use in your exam so even if you are not from a bio background and if you want to like if you get these kind of questions this is a basic hint which works 95% of the time so if there are like anything with two letters uh, two two words basically or uh, a single word and uh, uh, another word it should be a microbe so that is one of the basic like trick i can say when while guessing during uh, your exam if you are not from the bio background if you are from the bio background obviously you will be well versed with it so moving to the next question given uh, example of category b agents anthrax bubonic plague bru brucellosis tularem tularemia you are right so yeah so basically there are uh, category a category b and category c agents so category a agents are the major agents which have to be uh, like addressed at that point of time category b agents are something which can cause a danger and which have to be uh, but they uh, so in ca- in case of category a agents it is very difficult to actually fight and since they affect a large number of population in a very short time they are very difficult to manage category b agents uh, are also have a very high um, growth and they are something of a uh, very high concern and they have to be addressed immediately category c agents are basically something which are of concern and which are growing and have to be monitored so basically what happened during the covid pandemic is many countries rather than putting covid in a category b agent it was put in a category c agent so it was just monitored but uh, many times the action was not taken so when the actually action was taken is when it was uh, termed into category b so that is how the entire system works so this is mainly a, a theoretical type of question but the answer is brucellosis i don't think you have uh, uh, you will have any questions regarding this uh, so just let's just move to the next one okay so again very fundamental question uh, what does state of the art component in the research proposal contain so research status of research work novelty of the research objectives of the research uh, description about the methodology to adopt so <coughs> this is again a very fundamental question uh, any anyone any guesses about the answer this is a common sense kind of question so i i don't think this kind of questions will actually come in during your exams or even if they come it will be like a bonus for you guys to score uh yes the answer is b it uh, the state of the art component gives about the uh, research prob- uh, like the novel uh, how novel the research is so basically whenever you write a proposal uh, I, i don't know how many of you are in a phd but when you are uh, in a phd you have to write a research proposal uh, to get any fellowship or to like that is a very important part of your training so what you have to do is uh, the first step will be the title then there will be a literature survey uh, wherein you will be given you will have to write what what all <coughs> sorry what all is being done in this field maybe uh, in some cases you might have a national component and the international component so what is being done in in india and what has been done abroad then you have to give out the objectives so objectives are like bulleted points so five six points whatever your points are you have to they they will be bulleted and you have to uh, write them 
and then uh, in the methodology basically how you get how you plan to uh, get this um, project uh, how you intend to uh, execute this project is what is given in the methodology but and in the novelty of the research basically that is in the last section of your research proposal or maybe in the first section so it is either the first component or the last component so in novelty of the research basically you you have like an abstract kind of thing it is like a within 200 words or within 250 words you have to give out all the points so basically you have to list out why what is the problem you are addressing why is this a big problem and how you intend to address it and and that you have to also mention that nobody has come even close to what you are doing uh, you are intending to do or how close others had come before that is how you have to do uh, put in the novelty uh, in the state of the art section so moving to the next question so which portion of the sensor work does not contain and uh, does not come under calibration curve generation L uh, limit of detection that is lod uh, sensitivity specificity reproducibility re repeatability real sample analysis so basically the, uh, this is a single choice question yeah so the answer is yes answer is real sample analysis so basically what happens is every sensor is a electronic device it is it can you cannot get a exact um, like a replica of anything in uh, there will be some changes because again it's a biosensor again there will be some like the ma material property if you are having a electrochemical uh, setup if you are having coatings you will the coatings might not go very not happen ev everything will not be reproduced as and when in every sensor per se so what you have to do is you have to calibrate it so for calibration basically you need to calibrate the sensor at the lower uh, so you have to get a calibration curve per se so basically what this like what a specific value of voltage corresponds to so per se we can take an example of uh, glucose sensor so what a specific voltage corresponds to what specific amount of glucose is what you have to take so you have to take normal uh, samples with known values and then you have to put uh, like use your sensor with this different uh, values and then you have to get the calibration curve so it is expected that the calibration curve is straight in nature so where till it is straight uh, your sensor is really good obviously you cannot get a very straight curve but your aim has to be as straight as possible so uh, obviously the origin might not be zero so basically what happens is uh, the limit of detection is basically you can say if you are having a sensor uh, so like the input versus output curve limit of detection will be the like the minimum that can be detected so that there will obviously be an offset and then the sensitivity and specificity is basically how sensitive like how much if you change glucose by per se 1.1 millimolar how much the voltage is changing that is the sensitivity of the sensor and specificity is basically if you have glucose and basically you mix fructose with it is it able to only detect glucose or is fructose causing a problem so that is something called specificity and reproducibility and repeatability so basically you, you re, um, you get the you do the calibration curve n number of times so if the if per se for one millimolar you are getting 0.1 volts uh, today you should get the same value maybe in two days maybe in one week and maybe in six weeks also so that is what the reproducibility and repeatability factors are so all these things are main uh, components of a calibration curve so in this you have a demo kind of uh, samples you don't have a uh, real sample so uh, real sample analysis is not part of the uh, calibration curve you just take up what the uh, you take up known quantities and then you get the calibration curve so that is what the uh, purpose of calibration curve is uh, i hope there is no question if there is any question please unmute yourself and ask the questions 
ओके सो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ केमिकल वॉरफेयर एजेंट ब्लड एजेंट चोकिंग एजेंट ब्लिस्टर एजेंट नन ऑफ नन ऑफ दी अब सो अगेन एनी गैसेस basic trick is uh, blood agent is basically which is used uh, which goes and affects the blood uh, choking agent is basically you you are not able to breathe in using when they that agent is there and uh, blister agent causes blisters on your uh, uh, on your skin there it might be like something like chlorine or something like that so all these kind of agents are being used in chemical warfare so these are all chemical agents so uh, uh, the answer is none so not a uh, chemical warfare agent is all the three are chemical warfare agents so the answer is d none <coughs> this is a fundamental question so yeah one of the uh, so now moving to the na- uh, to the third uh, to the ninth question Wha- one of the essential characteristics of a reference electrode is to have polarizable electrode non polarizable electrode capacitive electrode uh, both polarizable and capacitive electrode so this is a very like um, going back to week 2 or week 3 so just to give you an um, uh just to uh, yeah the answer is non polarizable electrode so just to give you an uh, example so basically what you do is a electrochemical cell has three electrodes uh, you have a reference electrode working electrode and the counter electrode so basically the purpose of reference electrode is basically it is so whenever you are measuring anything it is bet- between the working electrode and the counter electrode so the reference electrode is basically kept to measure the changes in the signal due to atmosphere or uh, due to other characteristics so you are expect so in the start <coughs> the potential difference between uh, the working electrode and the uh, and and the reference electrode is supposed to be zero because then uh, when the sensing begins you will see a change in uh, voltage between the reference uh, and the counter electrode but the w- difference between the uh, reference and the counter electrode will be uh, constant so then you will see that okay all this uh, all what you are getting all the voltage you are getting is from the uh, is due to the bio recognition uh, that is happening so the sensing is happening so that is why it should be uh, so in case it is a polarizable electrode so in case it gets polarized you will see current being uh, developed on the uh, surface that will again lead to um, a change in the uh, like the re- uh, value of, of the voltage between the reference electrode and the counter electrode so your major aim w- should be uh, that the reference electrode is non polarizable in nature it doesn't get uh, influenced by the external um, magnetic or electric field so that is the so moving to the next question so yeah a person in, is in charge of operating a current readout optical readout device which is which involves uh, the different step components namely hydrazine inks methylene blue voltage source potentiostat mobile phone camera assembling this, uh, the screen printer four probe conductivity meter for measuring the conductivity ele- uh, electro deposit platinum uh, salts in the supporting electro electrolyte using potentiostat choose the correct arrangement of flow scheme such that he can put to use the pre mentioned component accessories to test the readout device so what do you think will be the answer i guess i gave the answer earlier I guess the, I, I messed up with the slide uh, slide arrangement. So what? Uh, so uh, you already know the answer, but yeah. Uh, what do you think will be the answer?
so the answer is option a so basically the workflow will be like first you will have to assemble the screen printer so that is like a given so assembling the screen printer is given so uh, like option 5 is first uh, first that is like a given thing so then basically you make a four uh, four probe conductivity meter for measuring the conductivity so first uh, you just first you measure the conductivity first then what you do is uh, you electro deposit thing so once you have established the conductivity you electro deposit uh, the platinum salts on the supporting electrolyte using a potential set once you have put the electrolyte so first what you do is um, you get the screen printer you measure the conductivity then you electro deposit the system so you make the uh, electro electrode per se uh, suitable for sensing application then you use hydrazine inks uh, which are used as used for uh, like uh, getting the um, biosensing done then use methylene blue which is the color indicator so then you do that then you apply the potential and in the last you use mobile phone camera for optical readout so that is the question uh, the answer so answer A is the uh, correct answer if you have any questions you can you are free to ask just a sec i have some technical issues i have So uh, answer A is the uh, answer. In case I was not audible, if you have any questions, you can your, you can just unmute yourself and ask your questions. Uh, so yeah for exam questions uh, so uh, so i hope uh, there is no uh, no doubt with the uh, question 10 so yeah coming to the exam questions basically it is uh, i actually don't know anything i i am as a part of my uh, pmrf as a as a pmrf fellow my duties are to uh, like solve your problems and solve your queries regarding assignments and basically help you uh, in a way that you can you are able to solve the assignment so i actually don't know anything about it but i have asked few people in the previous year so don't take me on uh, my word so you need to uh, ask the course instructor during their sessions itself but what i have heard from people who have given it in the previous year is that the um, it is like majority is mcq and msqs only there might be one question in which they ask to design some like basic sensor or something like that they ask uh, i am also not sure what will be the case because nowadays nptl uh, wants it the paper so that the people are uh, staying out so in a nptl exam you have to stay min uh, so it's a three hour exam so you have to stay minimum one one and a half hours so may, may, many times what happens is uh, the students are leaving after one and a half hours so nptl is um, asking the faculties uh, to make the paper such that uh, more students are staying after the one and a half hour mark so i actually don't know what kind of questions will be will be coming so that is up to the professor to decide that even the course ta's might not be no because the question paper is done by the professor so all the assignments are done by uh, the t course ta's the uh, these doubt solving sessions are, are done by me uh, but what what the question paper is it is uh, it is up to the professor to uh, decide um, the uh, 
uh, exact setup uh, i don't know but i think so even professor might not have decided till now because there is i guess one or two one week is there to actually set the question paper so uh, i don't know what the setup will be but you can ask that in the course uh, like discussion forum per se and uh, get your ch- questions cleared but whatever it is it will be very easy that i can uh, assure you because the aim is not to like fail you people it is uh, to get you like as much marks as possible so the paper will be very easy like if you go through all the lectures once and maybe just like go through the slides the next time you will be able to get score good marks in your exam that that much i can guarantee you so whatever your worry is don't worry much about this course just go through the lecture slide once that is for sure like you have to go to the uh, lecture videos once and then lecture slide once just before the exam so that is enough more than enough for everything uh, look at those like if you can uh, make a like all the structures chemical structures and all that might come for like five six marks uh, five six questions regarding that might come so just look at the chemical structures uh, in one of the assign- assignments also we had a lot of chemical structures so look at those mm. then uh, those uh, schematics which we had uh, in the previous week's assignment so go through them also they are also quite easy uh, and that's it i think so that that much and if you go through like today's assignment i am not sure how much will come i am not very like i don't think uh, like questions like what is res- state of the art in research and all those kind of questions will be asked but uh, like maybe if they come they'll also be they'll be for very less marks so majorly focus on the week 2 week 3 week 4 content the major uh, maybe uh, week 2 to week 6 uh, i would say so uh, the uh, the week 7 and week 8 i am not quite sure how much it will come so that is i think uh, i have given you some kind of overview of what kind of exam you can expect any other questions any question regarding the last question okay so if you don't have any questions you are uh, free to leave the session if you have any questions you can stay